Welcome to the 2021 Beacon of Light annual spring fundraising event. We're so grateful that you've chosen to join us. I'm Leslie Toback, Executive Director. We have a lot of exciting news to share with you, but let me start by sharing that our theme for 2021 is joy. The Bible verse we chose to guide this year is Psalm 71:23. My lips will shout joy when I sing praises to you, my soul also which you have redeemed. As we praise him with joy, God has blessed us abundantly with both resources and new staff whom I'm excited to be introducing to you shortly. First, we want to share our goals for this time together. We want to give you a deeper understanding of who our patients are, to give you a glimpse into their lives by sharing just a few of their stories with you. Then we want to give you a deeper understanding of who we are and how we serve the pregnant women who need our services. To do that, we're going to take you on a tour of the My Choice Pregnancy Center in Middletown, and then we'll head over to the maternity home of the Hudson Valley and introduce you to our staff and volunteers along the way. Finally, we want to share with you our vision for the future. We want you to know that we're positioned to grow and expand this ministry beyond everything that we've showed you today so that you can be confident, just not in the donation you're making now, but in your ongoing regular support of this ministry and how it'll be used to expand our services and reach more women, men, experiencing unexpected pregnancies. Now that you know what to expect for our time together, let's get started. Here's Pastor Anthony Mugnano from Encounter Church to open us in prayer. Wow, thank you, Leslie. That was awesome. So I just want to take this moment and pray and thank God for everything that's taking place here today. Lord God, I just thank you so much for what's in store, God. It's been a long and maybe some would say dreary uh, work to get to this journey, to get to this point. But the best is yet to come. The beginning has just begun that we're just seeing today. The beginning, the birthing of something amazing, something miraculous. And even in these last few days to see what's taking place here, that we are going to see great, indescribable things happen. Uh, I've said it before that uh, we've allowed the indescribable joy of the Lord come into our lives. And when you allow that joy to come in, you can't keep it, nor can you contain it. So that's just my prayer today, that this would just begin to grow and flourish and to be an amazing work and just see God's hand of faithfulness through the givers and through the people here today that are involved in this and just to continue to continue to continue to believe God and have hope. This is an amazing thing that you're a part of and you couldn't ask for a better place or a better time than now. Thank you, Pastor Anthony. It's been my humble honor to serve this ministry since 2004. I've seen God bless and uphold this ministry. I've come to a deeper understanding of his love for these women, men, and babies we serve with love and compassion. It is now my joy, honor, and privilege to introduce you to our new administration. These three are each uniquely qualified to lead and expand this ministry. The Bible says a three-strand cord is not easily broken, and God knows what this ministry needs to grow and expand in the coming years. First, the new executive director of Beacon of Light, Amy Matthew. Next, the new executive director of the maternity home, Pastor Helen Davis. And the director of advancement, Jill Kappa. Thank you, Leslie. Speaking of uniquely qualified, I'd like to acknowledge how tremendously blessed this ministry has been by Leslie's involvement for the last 17 years and her leadership for the past four. As the chairman of the board, I've had the honor of walking beside her these past few years, and I've been so inspired by her love for the women we serve and by her beautiful faith and trust in Jesus. I'm so honored to be taking the reins from Leslie and serving as the new executive director of Beacon of Light. I'm so passionate about the work that we do and feel incredibly blessed that God would consider me worthy to be used by him in this way. I invite you to reach out to me and come for a tour of our centers. I would love to meet you. Greetings, everyone. For the past 30 years, I have had the divine pleasure of serving pregnant women and families facing challenging circumstances through early Head Start and Head Start programs throughout New York City. Recently, the Lord provided an opportunity for me to lend my years of experience to the support of abortion vulnerable women through the maternity home of Hudson Valley. I am excited to be a part of this glorious assignment which saves the lives of babies 
and helps in the transformation of the lives of women. We offer pregnant women unconditional love, Christ-centered counsel, and life skills training to prepare them to embrace their new role as mothers. It is my heartfelt desire that every woman who walks through our doors will experience the sweet, transforming presence of the Holy Spirit and that they will be ushered into their divine purpose and their destiny. Hello, my name is Jill Kappa. I am the new Director of Advancement for Beacon of Light. We are so excited about the many events we have coming up in 2021. Our next big event after this fundraiser is our Walk for Life on September 25th at Thomas Bull Memorial Park. This is our second annual Walk for Life and it will be bigger and better than ever. We'll have food trucks, bands, corporate sponsorships, and lots of walkers. We hope that you can join us on a beautiful fall day and walk for life with Beacon of Light. We would also like to revive our student education and outreach programs. We plan to partner up with local churches in the Hudson Valley to educate our teens and tweens about living a healthy lifestyle. Thank you again for your time. Please remember that we need your support to keep the beacon of light on for these mothers and babies as we fulfill our mission. Enjoy the rest of the program. Let's get to know our patients and their stories. First, we want you to realize that women facing unplanned pregnancies are under a tremendous amount of stress. They're feeling afraid and alone. They're focused on their financial shortcomings, on the what ifs, on their lack of support. They're feeling hopeless and as if abortion is their only option. At My Choice, we offer compassion, hope, and a safe place for these women to process their feelings and their situation. We remind them they are not alone, inform them of all the resources that are available to them, and reintroduce hope into their situation. Let's listen now as our staff and advocates share some of these women's stories. She was 17 years old when she first came into the Middletown office with her mindset on abortion. Unlike most of our PACE participants, she was only 20. A teenager came to the Middletown office and immediately started crying when I gave her her pregnancy test results. She and her boyfriend came into our new Windsor office for a pregnancy test and an ultrasound. She came in to see me with complaints of nausea and stomach pain. She came in to confirm her pregnancy. She has two amazing kids and she is pro-life. I listened to her as she explained her living situation and health concerns. Her relationship with her fiance was on the rocks and the only other family she had was in Florida. She told me her estranged husband was pressuring her to abort and she was living in an unstable household with no emotional support from her parents. She had told me that she had two abortions and was showing signs of regret and remorse for terminating her first two pregnancies. Her family was concerned about her emotional, mental, and spiritual health after her abortion. She and her husband are already stressed out to the max between their finances, housing, and raising three kids. In addition to the infant she brought with her that day, I learned she had two other children at home, one of whom had special needs. She came from a strict Christian home and had already decided that this pregnancy was an accident, that she was not mentally ready, and that she could not tell her mother. She was homeless and had no health insurance. She did not want to have an abortion, but given her life circumstances, she felt as though she had no other choice. She was encouraged to speak to a family member before making any decisions and offered specific guidance for how she might tell her parents. A family member introduced her to our post-abortion healing coordinator. As a nurse practitioner, I was able to write her a prescription for the medication that she needed. We provided her with the information she needed to access services to reverse the effects of the pill. I don't always do this, but I shared my story with her, including the benefit of having the support of a loving family during a crisis, not knowing who this child may become in life, and the possibility of adoption. As I listened to her story, I felt the Holy Spirit telling me to tell her the truth and to tell her that her children were safe with our Father in Heaven. Over a long weekend of in-depth study of the scriptures, she experienced God's love, faithfulness, and forgiveness as she never has before. I share the love of God with her, as we do with all our patients, and through our encouragement and guidance, she found the strength to tell her mother. I saw her eyes well up with tears as she broke down and said that no one had ever told her anything like that before. 
Seeing her twins that day gave her the courage to resist the lure of abortion. She left the center grateful for our support, the services provided, and with a sense of calmness. When she returned for her follow-up appointment, she was so happy that she was keeping her baby. She decided to continue with the pregnancy and parent her baby with her mother's support. We gave them access to resources they needed, and despite pressure from her family, they chose life. Today, she lives in freedom from the bondage of her sins that Jesus died for. Today, she is the mom of two beautiful, healthy children. Through our carefully designed process and the power of the Holy Spirit, God showed her that she does have another choice, and she chose life. Beacon of Light is hope. Beacon of Light is family nurturing. Beacon of Light is healing. Beacon of Light is life affirming. Beacon of Light is solution focused. Beacon of Light is holistic care for women. Beacon of Light is support that shares the truth with love and grace. A beacon of Light empowers families to choose life. Wow, I hope you enjoyed hearing our patient stories. I never get tired of hearing about the lives that we impact here in the Hudson Valley. Let's go now to Nancy and Lisa, who are at our Middletown My Choice location. Okay, so this is our advocate room. We meet with the women one-on-one. -on -one. We assess the situation. We find out why they are wanting to have an abortion in the first place. Um, we give them all the resources that they need to make an educated decision. And my favorite part, we share the gospel with them. After our patients meet with the advocate, we bring them into the medical room where the nurse will do a health questionnaire and if a pregnancy test is positive, will perform a limited ultrasound where she can see her baby, see how far along she is in her pregnancy and hear her baby's heartbeat. If she brings a partner or a family member in, they're allowed to come in at this point if she would like to see the life that she is carrying. After the ultrasound, we give her pregnancy education, we give her a verification to get insurance, and then a referral to a doctor or a midwife. About once a month, we have well visits with a nurse practitioner for our patients that need them. Here we are at the maternity home of the Hudson Valley. During the pandemic, Benny Home stopped accepting women out of an abundance of caution, but God led the way for us this year and allowed us to not only open our doors, but he's blessed us with wonderful staff and allowed us to welcome our first pregnant women into the home. We even had our first baby born this year. Let's go inside so you can meet our staff and see the safe, supportive environment that we're providing for these moms and their babies. Welcome, my name is Pastor Latoya and I'm the house manager for Maternity Home of the Hudson Valley. Welcome to our home. Right here we have our dining room area where the girls and staff, we have uh, buffet style meals as well as family style meals where we come we pray together and we eat together at this table right here right over here is our fully functioning kitchen where either staffs or residents they can prepare meals and most times it's very yummy we eat good food here so this is our kitchen follow me let's go to the next part of the house oh look some residents and some staff this is our living room area, and this is where we have recreation time, TV time, mostly in the evening. We're in this area, just winding down and relaxing from our long days. All right, and we have this area of the house, which is our activity area, slash computer area, slash library. So right here is where we have most of our case management that happens so that the girls have access to the internet. Um, and we also have a plethora of books, spiritual, uh, life skills, all kinds of books that they can read to to go where they need to go in life. And this is where we do our activities, arts and crafts, and this is where we keep our schedule for the girls and their appointments. Right over here, we have a quiet area. Um, you may not want to be in your room, but you may not want to be in front of the TV. This is the area you can come and you can read, you can meditate, and you can just kind of chill out right here in this quiet area. Let's go to the residential portion of the home where our girls and babies live. All right, welcome to Canaan. This is Canaan. This is our only room that houses two mothers and two babies. Um, it's a beautiful room. And we can't wait for the next two girls that come here. Um, all of our rooms have a name. So this room is Eden. 
And these rooms back here are called Patmos and Peniel. Okay, and these are all single occupancy rooms. Let's take a look into Peniel real quick. So this is Peniel. It's one of our smallest rooms, but it gets the job done. The other two rooms are larger, um, but all of the girls are happy. And so we are so excited to be able to provide this through supporters like you. Thank you so much for touring with us at the Maternity Home of the Hudson Valley. Hey guys, this is one of our staff members, Jessica. She's a house assistant here at the Maternity House. Hi everybody, it's such a blessing here at the Maternity Home of Hudson Valley and I just would like to take the time out and thank all of you guys for all of your support. God bless. The ultimate vision of Beacon of Light is to live in a community where all unborn babies are given the gift of life. With that goal in mind, God has continued to lay on our hearts a desire to expand this ministry and increase our influence in the communities that we serve just as he did through our acquisition of Faith House. Now that our home is open, our vision continues to expand. We want to increase our brick and mortar My Choice locations in the communities in Orange County that need our services the most based on the abortion statistics. We are currently renting the house we toured earlier. It is beautiful and we are so grateful that God gave us the opportunity to open the home at that location. However, we want to buy a home, a permanent location here in Orange County for homeless pregnant women. And to be honest, we're feeling led that God may have a plan that includes more than one home, possibly multiple homes that serve women in different circumstances and stages of pregnancy and parenting. Our goal is to simply be obedient to his leading. We love the women we serve and feel incredibly blessed to be used by God to minister to them, whether it's for one hour at our My Choice locations or for up to 21 months at the home. We do our best to shine the light of Christ in every situation. Won't you join us as we seek to shine his light brighter? We've made it easy for you to partner with us. Simply click on the link below to go to our donation page. We are called in scripture to be a voice for the voiceless and a defender of the defenseless. You do that when you partner with us and our mission to support life. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Don't forget to click on the donate button below. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And now to close us in prayer, Pastor Jim Barringer from Grace Community Church. Thank you, Amy, and thank you for sharing your heart and, and thank you for your leadership in this ministry and for all the, all the leaders and all the people involved in this ministry. And Neil and I were so privileged to come alongside this ministry with prayer and support. And I'm so privileged to be a part of a church uh, that just champions Beacon of Light, uh, proclaiming it as one of the, the most amazing resources that we can offer women in our area. So I, I, I know sometimes when we look at abortion, I know personally I feel this way, Naomi feels this way, it just seems overwhelming. And, and how are we possibly gonna bring about a lasting change? Well, the good news is that we pray to an amazing God, the God of the universe, the God who makes uh, impossible things possible. So with that heart and with that mind, would you pray with me now? Father, we come before you pleading God, we're pleading on behalf of the unborn, God, that you would bring rescue, God, that you would bring uh, healing uh, where there is brokenness, Father, that you would bring uh, people coming to their senses, Father, that you would soften hearts where they are hard, Father, that you would bring about courage uh, in making difficult decisions, Father. We think specifically of these moms, Father, and, and, and they are on the fence right now. Father, we pray that you would intervene, that you would surround them with family and friends that would speak the words of truth, the words of life into their, in their lives, Father, and that they would come alongside them, they would come around them, letting them know that they are loved and supported, God. Even a miraculous encounter, Father, uh, for those moms. We think about the fathers in these circumstances, Father, that you would give them courage, that they would have the courage to stand up for their children. Father, we think of the extended family and friends surrounding uh, this mother, this father, Father, that they would speak truth and life. 
And God, we come to you on behalf of, of these people that are, are part of this uh, abortion industry, Father, doctors, nurses, uh, the people running these clinics, Father. I pray miraculously, Father, that their eyes would be open, that their hearts would become soft, Father, that they would see things as you see things, Father, and that they would come to their senses and repent and end this, Father. And finally, Father, we come before you, we, we plead on behalf once again of our elected officials. Father, whether it be in the judicial branch, the judges, Father, whether it be in ex executive branch, Father, or whether they be in legislature, Father, that you would work in their lives, surround them with truth, defeat the lies of the enemy, Father, and that you would bring about a, a legal change to this as well, Father. So we pray for moms that their hearts would be changed. We pray for this ministry, Father, as well, beacon of light. I pray that you would bring financial support in every way uh, for the home, for the, for the clinic, Father, for the ongoing care and support of, of the moms, Father. I pray that you would miraculously provide, even those listening right now, that you might stir in their hearts to give and to give generously. And Father, that they would also have the support of those volunteers that they need desperately in all aspects of the ministry. We believe, God, we come to you believing that you can do these things. And it's with that heart, with that mind, that we say, Father, do this, do this. In Jesus' name, amen.